As we watch my friend's newborn corgi puppies grow up week by week, I will try and help you decide if the corgi is a perfect breed for you, and if you're not looking for a dog, you can just enjoy watching how cute they are as they grow up. Buying a dog is a big decision to make, so let's get right into it. Besides the fact that corgis are incredibly cute, there are many reasons to why you might want to get a corgi. We're gonna go through the pros and cons. First you gotta decide which kind you want. There is the Pembroke and the Cardigan Welsh Corgi. And they both come in different colors. Pembrokes come in four basic colors. Red and white, sable and red headed or black headed tricolors. Cardigans on the other hand come in the same colors as the Pembroke. As well as Blue Merle and Brindle. Blue Merle can have blue eyes or even just one blue eye. Pembrokes on the other hand always have brown eyes. The most noticeable difference between them is that the cardigan's tail isn't docked while the Pembrokes is. The Pembroke Welsh Corgis are getting more and more popular in the US, but their popularity in other countries have declined since they have banned the docking of dogs' tails. The reason why Pembrokes have their tails docked is because back in time in the UK they were used as herding dogs and their tails could get in the way while working and you've had to pay a tax on pets since they were considered a luxury back then. And by docking their tails, they would pass as herding dogs instead of a pet, and people avoided tax that way. Although both types of corgis can be great as pets, what can separate them is the differences in their temperament. The Pembroke is a bit smaller and generally more affectionate, and is often picked by people looking for a family pet. The Queen of the United Kingdom even has several of them. That's not to say that the Cardigans can't be affectionate or a family pet too, they definitely can be. Corgis make great watchdogs, they will bark and alert at strange sounds or when people come to their door. But because of their small size and friendly nature, they're not ideal guard dogs. All bark but no bite. Let's take a look at the costs. A small dog such as a Corgi costs way less to take care of than a bigger dog. According to the ASPCA, a corgi costs around $410 a year, while a bigger dog can cost around $780 per year, because of the amounts of food and supplies it takes to take care of one. Training them. How easy is it to house train and teach a corgi tricks? Corgis were bred for herding, so they are a working breed, which requires some discipline and smarts. And because of that, you can compete with your corgi in different events like dog agility, tracking, herding, and obedience with great success. All that definitely helps when training your corgi and you will want to start early, since they have an instinct to nip on your ankles and try to herd you. Corgis can both be very active and calm, a perfect running partner, or a fellow couch potato. Meeting new people or having guests over won't be a problem if your corgi is well socialized. They can be protective and want to keep you safe, so make sure you socialize and play with your puppy. They do shed a lot, so make sure you have a vacuum cleaner. Most corgis shed twice a year. There are some hereditary diseases you might want to keep an eye out for when you get a corgi. Among them is degenerative myelopathy. You can ask your breeder if your puppy is DM clear. That way you won't have to worry about that in the future. I'll put a link in the comments where you can read more about their hereditary diseases. Let me know down in the comments if the video convinced you to get one or if you have any questions. I would appreciate if you subscribed and helped me reach my 500 goal. That way you'll get more videos like this one. And in the meantime you could check one of these two videos out. Hope you enjoyed watching the puppies. See you in the next video and stay interested.